Okay, hello, Honor Chem students. Finishing um, the second part of the lesson, which is about cogitative properties and how to calculate them. One of the um, things that's important to know is that there is another type of concentration that we would have to consider, and that is molality, which is expressed with this little m here, okay? So don't get little m and big M confused. Little m stands for molality, which stands for moles of solute over kilograms of solvent. Whereas, here I'm gonna see what, show you what this says, where um, capital M is called molarity, and that is liters of solution. Um, little m is molality, and that is about kilograms of solvent. So that's a big important thing to know, the difference between the two. Um, molality is used for calculating something called a boiling point elevation or a freezing point depression. Both are colligative properties of a solution. So how would we do a, a work with, um, with molality? Well, here's an example. Um, calculate the molality, so that's little m, of 45.8 grams of sodium chloride dissolved in 875 milliliters of water. Well, remember that molality stands for moles over kilograms of solvent. Moles of solute over kilograms of solvent. So this is my solute, and I'd have to convert that into moles. So that is the first work that I would do, and the molar mass of sodium chloride is 58.44 grams. And if you have to pause to, to um, write this all down in your notes, you definitely can. And then remember that molality is the moles over kilograms of solvent. Well, the density of water is one gram per milliliter, which means that one gram equals one milliliter. So if you have 875 milliliters, it means you have 875 grams, which in turn means that you have 0.875 kilograms. So now you got your moles of sodium chloride, you got your kilograms of water, and you can plug that in to get the molality, which ends up being 0 0.686 little m. Okay, so this is a concentration that we will use when we're using colligative properties. And colligative properties depend upon the concentration of the solute molecules or ion. It doesn't really depend upon the identity of the solute. It's all about the amount of solute that you have. And in case of an ionic compound, how many particles will dissociate. And so examples of um, colligative properties are things like freezing point depression. So we all know, living in Minnesota, that we can put salt on the ice and the ice melts. Well, today we're going to learn exactly how that works. Um, and or you, you, you could see that through the um, gizmo that we did earlier. You notice that um, the salt actually will get in the way of the hydrogen bonding that's happening in the ice and make it and make it melt. There's also something called boiling point elevation. When you put salt into water, it will elevate a boiling point. And all of this is happening because of this important concept right here, which we call vapor pressure lowering, which you learned about in the gizmo. This again is a picture of the pure solvent right? Or pure solvent, pure water, you get a certain amount of vapor pressure at a given temperature. But now if you put a solute in there, notice that the vapor pressure lowers. And that vapor pressure lowering is a colligative property, and it is the reason why the boiling point would have to elevate. So let's say if this many molecules here in this headspace needed to be in order to meet atmospheric pressure, because remember boiling point happens when atmospheric pressure and um, vapor pressure are equal. That means you'd have to put more energy in here. You'd have to have a higher temperature to get this many uh, water vapor molecules in that headspace, and that would increase the boiling point. Okay, but what we're gonna work on today is actually something called boiling point elevation and how to actually 
um, how to calculate it, okay? And again, here's just the picture again that shows that the solute um, is dissolving and the water molecules, the escapability of these water molecules is less because the solute is dissolving. Okay, so boiling point elevation happens when um, the solvent is attracted to the solute rather than escaping into the um, um, vapor phase. And I'm just showing that right here where this would be a regular boiling point. You've got three water vapor molecules here. And then in this picture here, you have the solute, which is dissolving, um, being dissolved by the water molecules. So you have less. Um, water here available okay so then that would be vapor pressure lowering which means that you'd have to put more energy into this water to elevate that boiling point all right so this is actually the equations that you would need for calculating a boiling point elevation one of the things that I would want you to look at is you have in the attachment at the end of this lesson a paper that says um, solubility table and boiling point and freezing point um, constants. And that's what we're going to use today because this gives us something called a KB, which is a constant for boiling point, or a KF, which is a constant for freezing point, which we're going to hear about in just a little bit. And so with a boiling point elevation, a solution with a high amount of solute will elevate a normal boiling point. We can calculate, and this is the equation that you would need to know, we can calculate the delta T by taking the KB times the M times the number of particles that would dissociate um, or, yeah, basically dissociate. And then once we've calculated that delta T, we would calculate the boiling point of the solution by taking the boiling point of the pure solvent, which, by the way, you can find here. Here's the boiling points of a whole bunch of solvents other than water and you would be adding your delta T. So let's take a look at a problem here. Um, what is the boiling point of a 25, and I meant for that to be three sig figs, so there should be three sig figs overall here. So let's call that 25.0. So I'm gonna go ahead and make that change. This is 25.0 grams of sodium chloride dissolved in 700.0, so I made that four sig figs, so I'll just add that in there, 70 or 70.0, 700 milliliters of acetic acid, okay? And then it asks for you to assume the density of the acetic acid is the same as water. So what you'll notice is you've got your, your table here and you should print out that table or at least have it available for you for um, the exam because there will be questions like this on the exam. And the first thing you're going to have to do is take your 25 grams and you're going to have to convert that into, and here I made another mistake, so I'm just going to make a change here. You're going to have to change, oh, I could, um, change that into moles. So... Um, you have 25 grams divided by the molar mass, and that ends up being 0 0.428. Let's see if I can get this, and this is what I want to fix, moles, right? So then, once you have your moles, you know that you also have the amount of acetic acid and they said to assume that the density of acetic acid is the same as water so that means 700 milliliters of acetic acid equals 700 grams of acetic acid which means that's 0 0.7000 kilograms okay once you have that you're going to use this information here the boiling point of the solution is equal to the boiling point of the pure solvent plus the delta t Okay, so what you will notice is that this delta T is equal to your KB, which you're going to find right here, and times the molality, which we will have calculated here in a minute, times the number of particles. Okay, so what I am going to do is 
take that 3.07 because this is acetic acid and that's what I'm working on. So I looked at its Kb value is 3.07 and it has a unit of degree C over M. This molality, and I guess I didn't calculate it, was actually found by little m is moles over kilograms. So if you take 0.428 and divide it by 0 0.700 kilograms, that's what gives you this little m. And then the number of particles is two. Why is the number of particles two? Well, that's because we're talking about sodium chloride. And when sodium chloride dissolves, remember it dissociates into two particles, right? So you could write, and I'm gonna try writing that just right up here, sodium chloride, NaCl, will break up, oops, that's NaCl, will break up into a sodium ion and a chloride ion. So together, that gives you two particles. And there went my, my thing just went crazy again on me. The darn pad, trackpad. I tell ya, let's see if I can get rid of that. I'm just gonna cut that. So there should be a negative here too. Sodium ion, can you guys just write in a negative ion there so I don't have to, to add that. Okay, so now you calculated your delta T and what that means is that you are going to substitute in your delta T into the boiling point of the pure solvent which you found right here at 117.9. So you add those two together and you end up with 121.7. So when you add 25 grams of sodium chloride into a 700 milliliters of acetic acid, that is the new boiling point of your solution, okay? I think I'm going to stop here and I'm going to make a second video for how to calculate a freezing point depression. See you then.